Thank you very much, um, Deputy Minister Majola. Um, good morning, colleagues, uh, both here and um, colleagues in Cape Town. Maybe let me um, do the honor of, you've noticed we've got the DG um, of energy, and then next to him is Didi Jimbambo, whose program is a um, responsibility of the outcome uh, that relates to the nuclear. He, it falls under him, but we've got other DDGs with us here today who have joined us from the department. So I thought, let me just flag that, um, if it is important for us to, if we're going to need to get them to respond to certain issues. Um, the team will be helping me with um, engagements. And we felt that it's important for us to engage the, here today, colleagues. Uh, and thank you very much for coming. Despite the weather outside, it's a very cold day today, and you've praised that. Um, just I'll read the statement and then we'll, we'll take it from there. We've got a statement that has been prepared. On the 26th of April 2017, two judges of the Western Cape High Court, hearing an application by EarthLife Africa and others, versus the Minister of Energy and five others, handed down a judgment in the following terms. We note six areas that are um, affecting or that we are concerned about uh, from the judgment. Number one, the Section 34 determination of 2013 is unlawful and unconstitutional and is reviewed and set aside. Number two, the Section 34 determination of 2016 is unlawful and unconstitutional and is, set, uh, is reviewed and set aside. Number three, any request for proposal or request for information issued pursuant to the 2013 or 2016 determinations are set aside. The minister's decision to table the Russia, Russian intergovernmental agreement in terms of section 231, subsection 3 of the constitution is unconstitutional and unlawful and is reviewed and set aside. The minister's decision to table the U.S. and South Korea intergovernmental agreements in terms of Section 231, subsection 3 of the Constitution is unlawful and unconstitutional and are reviewed and set aside. Costs were ordered against the minister and those costs occasioned by the first responded as a result of the late disclosure of the 2013 determinations are on a more punitive attorney and a client scale. I have, prior to the issuing of this communication, consulted with the officials within the department as well as legal representatives that were dealing with this matter. Major concerns were raised with regards to the judgment and its implication to the department in relation to the agreements that affects our counterparts in other countries and Section 34 determinations. I need to highlight colleagues as an important matter that energy mix re remain our policy as the department. Government and the department remains committed to the currently approved energy mix policy and will continue to strive to implement all forms of energy sources to secure the supply and availability of energy in the country. We appeal to our stakeholders to stop the temptation to divide the sector between nuclear and renewables. In terms of the decision from our side as for relating to the court, I've decided that I will not appeal the decision of the Western Cape High Court on this matter. Following this decision, I have issued the following instructions to the department. Section 34 determinations amongst, sorry, following the decision, I have issued the following instruction to the department. The first one is in relation to section 34 determinations. Amongst reparative measures agreed to as the department is the review of the processing of all future Section 34 determinations and a review of all determinations that are currently in place to ensure compliance with the judgment. Another area of action is on the intergovernmental agreements. In accepting the ruling of the court and ensuring that no in in property is suggested in the future, the department seek to, will seek to apply standardization in both form 
and process relating to all the intergovernmental relations. And we are going to be able to engage with them, to conclude to them with the international countries, our counterpart. It is important to note that there is no intention to table the current agreements in Parliament, but will embark to sign new agreements with all the five countries and table them in Parliament within reasonable, <clears throat> sorry, within reasonable time for Parliament's consideration. I think let me just emphasize that this is because if you look at some of these agreements, they were signed in 1995. Now, if you are to look at the rationale, if you are to apply your mind properly, there is no rationale to submit a agreement that was signed in 1995 in 2017. Hence, we'll be embarking on new process and signing with the colleagues in those five countries new agreements and within a reasonable time table them in Parliament. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, how we're going to do it is good that uh, we're going to take a set of questions here. But given the constraint of times, I'll also at the same time take a set of questions from Cape Town and the Minister and his entire uh, will assist. As colleagues, uh, uh, who ready themselves to pose questions, please introduce yourself and the media house organization that you are from. Thank you very much. Can I see hands if we do have questions here? Uh, you men, you are the fact you and you in that order. Abdul <coughs> Slavet from Money Week. Uh, Minister, if done, how much time do you think will be lost to get to a point where you actually thought you were, would it take a year or more? Do you have an estimate how long it will take to catch up again and redo these processes? And then the other question is, uh, some findings were also made against NERSA in this um, case, but also in other cases. Also regarding process, is the department engaging with NERSA or how do you uh, propose to, to address that or, or is NERSA on its own in this regard? Uh, Minister Terence Creamer, Engineering News. On the new uh, intergovernmental agreements, can you just give us again, just for uh, clarity, what the five countries are that you're going to be re signing with, uh, the time frame for the re signing of uh, those IGAs, um, and the, uh, uh, whether in the interim, whether those IGAs have governed some of the current nuclear activities. For instance, I'm not sure that the procurement of nuclear fuel at Kuzberg and the sale of medical isotopes out of uh, the safari reactor, is there, are those safeguarded? Are, are those different contractual agreements or do these IGAs govern them? And if they do govern those, uh, the, the, both the procurement of fuel as well as the sale of medical isotopes, what do we do in the interim? And then secondly, on the other Section 34 determinations that have been issued, um, I suppose also illegally and unconstitutionally, in terms of renewable energy, gas, cogeneration, and medium-term risk mitigation uh, projects. Uh, what are you going to do to make safeguard those uh, th from, the, from a legal review? Are you going to be seeking a condemnation order, for instance, from the courts for, for the fact that you didn't follow what the, the Western Cape High Court saw as a, a legal process, not only for the nuclear, but also for the other technologies? Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Chris Yellen from EE Publishers. Uh, Minister, to extend the question, the previous question from uh, Krima, um, uh, what is going to happen regarding the Window 4 and Window 4.5 renewable energy IPP decisions um, and power purchase agreements that ESCOM has blocked. Uh, will this process be delayed further as a result of perhaps reviewing the Section 34 determinations uh, that have already been made by the former minister? Uh, and, and what kind of delay can we expect for the new IPPs, both coal, uh, gas, and uh, wind 
and solar, and in particular, the window 4 and window 4.5 extradited round. Uh, what are the time implications for this? Thank you. My name is Melissa T. Jana from AN7. Um, Minister, I just want to find out. Um, uh, okay, sorry. Of the 13 questions, just put one. Okay. Um, how do you see the reluctance and uh, concerns shown by ASCOM in signing up more um, agreements with IPPS? Thank you, colleagues. Uh, Cape Town, good morning and welcome. Andy there, go for it. Uh, go ahead, sir. Hi, morning, Minister and the team. Um, it's Sir Wangam Kwanazi from Independent Newspapers. Just one question, Minister. In your Cape Town, engagement, last engagement with the Commission for the Commission, you said you're going to consult with your legal team and then take a decision. I just wanted to find out if you have been able to get in touch with the committee in terms of the decision that you have arrived at now, that you have just communicated, and the processes that will be followed by the department. And uh, yeah, thanks. That would be it from us in Cape Town. So back to you. Thank you. I'll give over to the minister. Thank you very much. I think let me start with the last one by um, from Independent News. Um, in terms of the process, we've not been back to the committee. Um, obviously, we'll communicate our decision to the committee, portfolio committee because I had committed um, constant engagement with them. So we'll communicate to the portfolio committee in terms of the decision. And um, colleagues as parliamentarians would also be right now following what we are doing here uh, in terms of the communication because I really felt that it's important for us to take the nation into confidence of the decision and how we arrived at it. And we had to sit with the legal team to look at the issues as I said in the committee where I was concerned and how we're going to, to get around them. And then the couple of issues around the determination, I would, I would want to flap them around. Let me just deal with the issue of the NERSA. The judgment speaks specifically about public participation on the section 34 and that particular is the reflection on the work of NERSA to say when the minister issues determinations, NERSA in because the law says that they need to concur with the minister but the judgment has said which is a new thing something that we have never done before that in order for NERSA to concur to agree or disagree Therefore, they need to hold um, engagements. So that's, that's where the issue is of, of public consultation. No other determination has been subjected to consultation or public engagement. All the other in, um, Section 34 determinations that have been issued previously have been issued according to what the process of the nuclear new build program has been. And that, because the judgment now has said we need to consult, we need to have that consultation. So part of what we do as the department is to engage with NERSA when we develop a process. So that we ensure that because NERSA is, though they are independent regulator, they, also are, they are also a, a, an entity that falls within our portfolio. So would ensure that that compliance with the judgment is attended to by also NELSA. And then um, I think that's the question from Manuweb. And also the estimated time frame uh, and time lost. Obviously, definitely, we have to say that there has been time lost. Remember, um, ESCOM had issued requests for information that were closing on the 29th of April. That has since been set aside. So that work is lost um, for us in terms of the process, meaning we're going to have to start afresh, do new determination, and also start the process of request for information. And I need to indicate the reason why that process is important is to be able to assist us to determine the funding model and the cost. 
so that work has been uh, set aside would be able to relook am i able to give exact time frames currently not yet because we're doing quite a lot of work at the background with led by the ddg and bambo once we are aware or we are sure of our time frames and uh, the process that we would obviously take because we have to consult our stakeholders in the process that we're going to put in place for new for for the determination for example will be dependent on on the work and engagement with nursa so once we do that we can be able to have time frames and i can assure the public that once we know will constantly communicate either through this platform as um, media engagement or through parliament portfolio committee. But some level of engagement and communication to the public is, will be uh, taking place so that we do not end up where we were previously with um, mistrust and uh, uh, suspicions. So that's, that's uh, what I can say. Um, in terms of the question from Engineering News, for five countries, uh, who are they? It's USA, China, South Korea, Russia, and France. So those are the five countries. Uh, that we are going to, to have to do. There are anxious, obviously, as our counterparts, are, I need to indicate uh, in terms of this. Definitely, it will be a discomfort for them because uh, there is work that they are doing currently at, at Safari, and um, which sort of governs the, the work. So we we'll definitely try our level best as soon as possible, starting from next month, with the, which is June, to start signing the agreements from our side as the department so that we can continue to give that assurance give that a uh, level of comfortability so once we do we'll take them to parliament so that we don't delay any further uh, what happens to the current environment we are engaging with nexa we think we should be able to do some level of work but it's it's not going to be a sustainable environment we definitely need the agreement in place to be able to do a lot of work that we do as you're talking about the exportation of the medical uh, facilities that are the uh, medical products that are there so that's that's um, what I can say I think uh, did you can add on that then what happens to the IPPs, and I think it, it's from the EE publishers and AN and Seven. It does, as as the court judgment is saying, set aside the the process that we were engaging on. So it impacts on all the determination, including the determination of the IPPs, colleagues. We remain committed to implementing the program of renewables. I think I need to say. And hence my statement to say we shouldn't see them against each other and putting the renewables against nuclear. But what we want to do proactively as the department, we want to ensure that we are not challenged. So we shouldn't wait until somebody takes us to court and say, because of this judgment, therefore this determination uh, is illegal. So we are saying we are reviewing all of them and starting the new process. What that means in detail uh, we'll have to finalize. We have not finalized our engagement with the IPP office, which is a team that is doing our work to determine the imp impact of it con uh, comprehensively. But we think we should be able to continue with the current work. But we think that going forward, we might be taken to court mm -hmm. by those who are if they oppose renewable. So for us as a department, it's very important to be proactive so that we don't wait until somebody takes us to court. Within the current environment, we should be able to still operate, but we want to be uh, cautious and make sure that we don't end up where we are with the nuclear program. I, I think I've, I've exp uh, I don't know if DMI forgot anything you want to add. Uh, did you?